What's up? Welcome back to Dark Souls. Um, last time, I left off down by the Titanite Demon, but I actually want to come back up here first and do this. Um, come talk to the NPC here, the Knight of Katarina, and he will explain to you that he's trapped here because there are some Silver Knights in the next room. And he doesn't know how to take care of them by himself. He's trying to think of a plan. So we're just going to go in there and take care of the Silver Knights for him. Um, there are three Silver Knights in this room altogether. And you got to be careful. You don't want to fight them more than one at a time. Same with basically any enemy in the game. Um, now, I forgot there were three because it's been a while since I played the game. I only remembered two. So I walked through the door and I was getting ready to position myself to <laughs> distract one of them or get one of their attention, and this guy started killing me, so keep an eye out. Um, don't let this guy kill you. Just get some uh, reposts on him. Oh, another thing to be careful of is not to fight him inside of the room with the NPC, because you don't want to aggro the NPC to fight against you. Um, this NPC gives you a pretty sweet item at the end of his quest, his quest line, so... Just be careful of that. Try to fight the Silver Knights in here and not in that room back there with him. Because we would like to see his quest line all the way through to the end. And uh, same as last time. Um, reposts are very effective on Silver Knights. Uh, in my opinion, they are the easiest enemies in the game to repost. To learn like the timing and the feeling for reposts. There we go. Um, they're actually pretty easy to get backstabs on, too, if you can kind of find the sweet spot. Sometimes it's a little hard to find it, so that's why I like doing reposts on them normally, but... Anyways. He gave us a silver knight sword, which is nice. Get some demon titanite and open this door, which was only able to be opened from this side. And this leads us back into this area. Down to the left, there's usually a silver knight who shoots... Um, Dragon Slayer arrows. Now, before you leave this area, I forgot to do it this time. I had to come back. Make sure you talk to the Knight of Katarina because he will not progress in his um, quest line unless you talk to him. He'll also give you a ring in exchange for killing the Silver Knights for him. So, it's a useless ring. I don't think I've ever used it before. Um, but that's not the important part. The important part is getting him to move back to Firelink Shrine after you finish this area. So just make sure you talk to him before you proceed through the area. Talk to him a couple times. Make sure you got all of the dialogue there. And then head up the stairs. And... On this particular day, when I was playing the game, I was struggling for some reason. I think I was just being really impatient, but I was missing reposts. I was dying a lot. Um, I don't remember why. I, I must have been in a hurry or something, because it really is really easy to get reposts on these guys, and I was just missing them like crazy for some reason. It happens. Uh, Dark Souls, you know, it'll do that to you sometimes. Sometimes... It doesn't matter how much experience you have in this game, some days you're just off. So This was one of those days for me, so... Uh, excuse the uh, the poor gameplay for, you know, this particular video. Now, the uh, Titanite Demon's on the left. Don't worry about him yet. We're going to come back after we've summoned uh, a player online to help us out with that. You can take him out on your own. I mean, I've done it before. But it's a lot easier with someone else. And this particular Silver Knight, I don't know what it was about him. I I was really struggling with this particular enemy. Don't ask me why. I was doing just fine on almost everyone else. But for some reason, this particular guy was giving me the hardest time. He killed me like four times before this. And then I thought I had him here, but all I did was knock him down. So he's not dead. I thought he was dead, but he isn't. So I was like, finally, I got rid of that guy. Now I can go open the door and open the, the shortcut back to the bonfire. And I was like, crap, I didn't kill him. You can see him there trying to get back in the room. 
So I was like, darn it. I had no trouble with this guy here. For whatever reason, this Silver Knight with a spear was just fine for me to take down. Get backstab on him here. Oh, these two chests on the right, they contain a pretty good set of armor. It's actually the Silver Knight set, um, which I might end up using for a little while. Not forever, but maybe for a little while in the game. They have great fire resistance, so keep that in mind. But then I opened the door for this Silver Knight again, who had killed me, I don't know, something like four times before this point. I was trying to get a backstab on him. For some reason, it was not working. And right here, it should have worked. There's no reason why that backstab should not have worked. But he ended up killing me again. And I was really pissed. But at least I got the door open this time. So because I got the door open, I was able at least to go back through the shortcut. So, anyways, I like um, the, the Silver Knights with the swords. They're a little bit easier to repost. They're, for, for whatever reason, for me, their attack patterns are easier to pick up on. And for some reason, I was having a hard time getting backstabs. The game is just like that. Sometimes it's just like, it's really touchy. But, um, if you're watching these videos, you've probably realized that and have come online for help, so... Anyways, I was pissed at the Silver Knight. I really wanted to kill him. I wanted my revenge, and I was going to do it with backstabs. Finally got one here. And then he was kind of pinned up against the walls, trying to drag him back, but it didn't quite work. Couldn't get around him. I was getting really pissed. But I finally got him. Even then, he still wasn't quite dead. I had to... I had to... <laughs> really finish him off here. It's a very satisfying, very satisfying kill for me. Because that guy had just caused me tons of problems for no reason. And then of course this guy, no problem. Anyways, uh, you kill these guys. There we go. Now, um, there's a, a blacksmith in, in Orlando that I'd like to introduce you to now because we want to upgrade um, our washing pole. Now, some of you might be curious as to why I'm using the washing pole. You're like, Mike, what the fetch are you doing? Like, Uchikatanas have the same stats and they weigh less. You're going for a dex build. Why are you using a washing pole? It's heavier than Uchikatana. I admit the only reason is because I want to look like Sephiroth. It's a huge katana, and it looks like Sephiroth's sword, and that's that's like the only reason. That's not the only reason. It also has really great reach on it. Um, it's much longer than Uji Katana, so. But you're right, it is heavier, and that's kind of annoying. Make sure you pick up this Dragon Slayer bro, uh, Dragon Slayer Great Bow. Um. Now, you don't have to fight these guys to get to the blacksmith. There is an alternate route where you don't have to come here and fight them, but I just got pissed again that I died. Um, so I came back the same way again just to exact my revenge on these enemies that are actually very easy to kill. Um, and I should not have been dying on them. So, anyways, I came back and got my souls and killed all these stupid enemies that were pissing me off just knocking them off the edge here and letting them fall to their deaths um there is some demon titanite you can pick up here though so that's a good reason to come down here and kill these guys too or not demon titanite sorry uh, titanite chunk titanite chunk we're going to be using right now so it's good to come pick this up um, this blacksmith can modify your weapons with lightning elemental damage and, I think, blessed elemental damage, if I'm not mistaken. You might have to bring him an ember for that, but um, we'll do that eventually. But for right now, let's modify our washing pole to a lightning washing pole. It will take the physical damage down from 180 to 162, but it will add 162 lightning damage. So that's awesome. Um, and with the uh, Titanite chunks that we've picked up so far throughout the game, we can upgrade it to a, washing, a lightning washing pole plus two, 
which will bring the physical attack back up to 182. Or I think that's what it said, maybe it's 187. And uh, same for the lightning damage. So now, our washing pole is really powerful. Um, the This guy here, he sells um, some twinkling titanite, I think green titanite shards, large titanite, and regular titanite, as well as uh, the giant set. So keep that in mind. Now, what you're going to want to do is come back to the bonfire and summon a player. If you can get two players summoned, that's even better. But summoning is kind of buggy in this game. Uh, any of you who have tried it will know that. Um, and a lot of times it just fails. So it's okay if you only get one because we can summon Solaire, the NPC, again. But get at least one human, if you can. Uh, for this next boss fight. It's, it's pretty important, actually. It makes the fight, like, significantly easier. Um, I just really suggest it if you're new to the game. I mean, you can try and take them out. It's, it's totally doable as you become more experienced in the game to fight this boss on your own. It's just not something I suggest if you're new. Um, it's better to learn their attack patterns, get some help first. Um, fight them a few times, um, first, you know, in your own game, but then laying down your own summon sign, and then going back and helping other people beat the boss. And then maybe on your New Game Plus run, or maybe New Game Double Plus, you know, come back and try and take them out on your own. So, now that we've got another player, let's come in here and take care of the, uh, Titanite Demon. It'll be a lot easier with another player fighting. Again, totally doable on your own, just takes a lot longer. This guy's got a pretty good weapon, too. When he two hands it like that, he does a lot of damage. And we take care of him. He drops some uh, Demon Titanite. So pick that up. And now we're ready to... Just about ready to take on the boss. Now in this area up here, this big area down on the bottom you might see some big uh, stone well, I don't think they're stone giants I forget the name of them but they're big giants um, there's two of them down there and I think that uh, the NP the, the the player that I summoned is gonna go start fighting them but I suggest coming around to this side by the way to the left that corridor down there that leads back to the the blacksmiths just in case you were wondering what the other path is to get to him but kill this Silver Knight because he is shooting down at our friend with Dragon Slayer arrows, which is very annoying when you're trying to kill giants. So make sure you take care of him. Oh, and by the way, the reason I'm not wearing a helmet is because it made me a little too heavy and I couldn't use my ninja flips. So I just took the helmet off. But all I have to do is upgrade my endurance by like two more points and I should be able to put it back on. So... Anyways, once we get Solaire summoned here, we should be good to go. Now, there's a very specific reason. Um, actually, before you go fight the boss, come down here and open these doors. This leads back out to the front of the castle again. So again, it's just kind of a shortcut leading back to a previous bonfire. So open this door before proceeding in to fight the boss. But, the reason why you want to have a real-life player to fight this boss with you is because there are actually two enemies. And what you want to do is have the other player distract one while you fight the other. Solaire will not do that on his own. If you're fighting with just Solaire, he will often just attack the same guy you're attacking. And you don't want that. You want to be able to split the two enemies apart and have one person take, you know, this guy, Smau, I think that's how you pronounce his name, while you fight Ornstein or vice versa. You go fight Smau and the other player will take Ornstein away. Now, there's some etiquette I need to let you know about when you're fighting this boss. If you lay a summon sign down and you're helping someone else to fight this battle, do not attack... <laughs> Whichever one the player decides to go fight, like here, I decided to go and fight Ornstein, right? You'll notice that the guy I summoned is not attacking Smau at all. He's just distracting him and leading him away. 
The reason why you do that is because depending on which one of these guys you kill, you will get... Well, whichever ones you kill first, um, the, the other one is going to kind of have like a power-up moment, and you'll end up fighting like a powered-up version of the other one that you didn't kill first. Whoever that ends up being, you will be able to get their armor set and weapon. And so, for instance, I'm killing Ornstein right now. That means that Smau will be the powered-up version that we'll be fighting, and I will have Smau's armor set and weapon available to me later on in the game. But I cannot get Orensteins until I do a second playthrough. So when you're playing this, you know, with when you're when someone summons you, they expect you to distract whoever it is that they decided not to go after first because they're trying to get the armor set. Does that make sense? So maybe they killed Ornstein first in their first playthrough, now they're on their second playthrough, and they want Smau's armor set, right? So just make sure that whichever one they go to kill first, don't kill the other one. Just distract them so that they can get the armor set they're looking for in that playthrough. Hopefully that makes sense. If you have questions about what I just said, ask away. I'll try to answer them in the comments. But... The point is that because I killed Ornstein first, now Smau's armor set is going to be available to me after I defeat the boss here. A little bit later in the game, not right away. And I just basically wasted all my Chaos Fireballs, so that was not cool. But uh, with the three of us together, this should be pretty quick work here to kill Smau. And I think we got it. One more hit should do it. There we go. So, that boss is pretty easy when you're fighting with someone online. It's really hard by yourself. It will take you some practice. Um, but it is totally doable. I've done it before. And you can do it if you want to challenge yourself. But if you're new to the game, just do yourself a favor and summon somebody. Summon two people if you can. All right, now that we have finished them off, we've got a bonfire up here that we can kindle, so go ahead and do that. Level up if you want to do that as well. I'm going to level up my uh, endurance a little bit so I can put my helmet back on. Make sure you kindle the bonfire as well. All right, that's more like it. So now we want to come up here and open this door, and we got another NPC that we can talk to. And another covenant becomes available too. Um, it's not a covenant that I'll be joining, but it's there for you if you would like to try it out. So this is Guinevere. She is the daughter of Gwyn, who was the god king, sort of, of Anne Orlando. So she's actually going to ask you to succeed, Lord Gwyn. And by doing so, uh, link the fire. I'll talk about that maybe in a future episode. There are two different endings. If you're having a hard time following the story of this game, uh, I don't blame you. They're, they don't really give you much. So there's two different endings. I'll kind of explain them when it becomes pertinent and explain a little bit more about the lore and the story of Dark Souls in that episode. But for today, she wants you to kill her dad. That's basically all there is to it. So come back out here, go back to the right, and go back down the elevator, because now we're going to use an item that we got uh, a little bit earlier in the game. If you remember um, the Knight Latrec, the guy with the gold armor um, that we rescued from a cell back in uh, the right near where we rang the first bell of awakening in the bell tower if you remember he ended up killing the um, the firekeeper of firelink shrine and so we can't use that bonfire anymore that was a couple episodes back that that happened so we're going to use the black eye orb that we picked up from where she used to be um, where he killed her we're going to use that 
here in this area in Anor Londo. And what that's going to do is allow us to invade the Knight Latrec's La world. Um, and we'll, it's basically like a, a tutorial of sorts for invasions, how to invade other players. Um, these knights, or these, uh, these giants can be pretty annoying. They can heal themselves, they can hit you with a, an emit force spell that can blow you back. You really have to be careful with these guys. They're not too hard to kill once you get used to their attack patterns, but you basically just got to try and get underneath them where they they can't attack you. But uh, go through this area, kill the Silver Knight and the Giants, just kind of clear this area out right here, and then go ahead and use the Black Eye Orb. You just use it like any other item. Um, and what you can do is you can now come into the world of Knight Latrec, who is guilty because he killed the uh, Firekeeper. And he's going to have two friends with him, helping him out. One of them is a magic user. You really want to try and kill him first. He's the most annoying guy. This guy right here. He's going to keep trying to hit you with, like, Soul Arrow and stuff. It's really, really sucks. So kill him as quick as you can. That is my suggestion. And then go after the Knight Latrec. And then, uh, as soon as you get him you're good to go. Um, his weapon can actually break through your defenses, which can be tough. So, once once you get rid of the guy who wields magic, that's the most important part. Just get rid of him first. <laughs> he's he's the most dangerous. The Knight Latrec is the second most dangerous because his scythes can cut through your defenses. But just don't let them get behind you. Like this. I just let the Knight Latrec get behind me. That's a bad idea. Um... Oh, another thing I need to mention, you can't use Estus when you invade somebody. You can only heal yourself by using humanity, so keep that in mind. Um, have your humanity ready so that you can use it to heal. Because you're probably going to need it when you're fighting three guys on your own. And uh, anyways, just keep your distance and stay patient. That's kind of the key, just stay patient. Um, keep both of them in front of you, don't let them get behind. Let him kind of roll up towards you like that because then he'll be vulnerable for a second that's when you can get your attacks off once you kill him and if you keep them together like this you can actually hit them both at once which is which is nice but one more hit should do it there we go and once you get the knight latrec you're good to go like you don't have to kill this guy as well um you get a souvenir of reprisal um as well as um there's a ring that he gives you, one that I don't really use. Um, you get a bunch of humanity, and you get, most importantly, a Firekeeper Soul. The Ring of Favor and Protection, that's what it is. But you get a Firekeeper Soul for doing this. And we're going to go ahead and warp back to Firelink Shrine. Um, I guess I failed to mention that. While I was talking to Guinevere, she gives you what's called the Lord Vessel. And the Lord Vessel will allow you to warp to various um, to various uh, bonfires throughout the game. It's kind of the, the, the game's um, fast travel system. Now before we do that, um, there is an armor set that we want to pick up. Because we just killed Latrec, we can actually pick up his armor set. It's right back over this way. So once you kill him, it appears over here. And uh, it's a pretty cool armor set. It's not one that I love. I mean, it's cool looking, but I don't love using it. It doesn't have the best stats. Anyways, come back and warp to Firelink Shrine. And we're going to go ahead and revive the Firekeeper. And then upgrade our Estus Flask while we're at it. So we can't use the bonfire right now because she's dead. But we come down here and re uh, return the Firekeeper's soul, and now she's back. And I really like this dialogue here, so I'm going to be quiet for this part. Anastasia of Astora. Now I can continue my duty as a keeper. But I only hope that my impure tongue does not offend. The 
forgive me. I have been pure. My tongue never intended for restoration. Please, if you have any heart, leave me be. I wish not to speak. Yeah, I'm not sure what it is about that dialogue that gets to me, but there's something about that that gets to me. There's something pretty jacked about that. Um, pretty dark stuff, but anyways. Now that we got her back, we can use the bonfire, which is nice. And the Knight of Katarina is here. So, go ahead and talk to him a couple times, get through all of his dialogue, and he'll move on to his next scripted place in the game. Um, say yes to his question. It seemed like an unlikely coincidence. Well, am I fortunate? All right, and in return he gives you a miracle. Now, I'm not really using miracles in this playthrough, but Emit Force is a pretty good spell. Um, it's kind of like that spell that those giants were using on me, where they just kind of like have this force that blows everything back. Also, before you leave, come and talk to uh, this pyromancer here that we saved back in the depths because he can help you to upgrade your uh, pyromancy flame so that your pyromancy is more powerful, which is essential. I definitely recommend that you do this. Now, I um, said yes to this question on accident, so he ended up saying, oh, that's too bad. So I had to talk to him again, and the next time he asks, he says, "Are you? Would you? Have you changed your mind? Say yes to that question. Say no to the first question, and then he will allow you to modify your pyromancy flame. So do that as many times as you can. Also, he sells uh, a bunch of different pyromancy spells. The only one I would really suggest getting for later, if you can, is the Iron Flesh. Uh, we're definitely going to use that in." The not so near future, but pretty soon. So, anyways, he's here. Um, that's all I've got time to do for today. Oh, watch out for this guy. You see that monster back there? Don't talk to him yet. We'll talk, we'll figure that out later. That's all for today, though. So, peace!